Hello everyone, so we have to do this a little bit differently because the surface doesn't connect to the smart board. So I have to use the surface to film the smart board and then use the, um, whatever, the desktop to write on the smart board. So um, anyway, today's lesson is about light um, and wavelength and frequency, which if you're in honors chem, you learned a lot about. And then we talked a little bit about light in honors biology and nothing about light except for jumping from the excited to the ground state, which is what we're going to talk about um, on Thursday, uh, tomorrow. Um, but anyway, light is a form of energy, and it travels in waves. Okay? And a wave has, you can measure two things about a wave. You can measure its frequency, and you can measure its wavelength. I'm about to define those things, so don't worry. Okay. So a wave with a high frequency has a lot of energy. And a wave with a high wavelength has low energy. So if we look at the difference between wavelengths, so the definition of wavelength, right, is the distance from peak to peak. Go down a little bit more. Distance from oh no. peak to peak in a wave. So here, this distance from peak to peak in the wave of light or it also could be from trial to trial, is the wavelength. Now when you scroll, so hold on for a second. Now, if we look here, frequency is based on the number of waves you see. So in this one, you see less waves. So this has a low frequency. And this one, you see a lot of waves. It has a high frequency. Okay. The AP exam cares about the relationship between frequency and wavelength. So if you have a high frequency, you have a low wavelength. and high energy. So if you see the one that has the highest frequency, the distance from peak to peak is this sort. So go all the way down. And that's it up to the stage for the next thing. Okay. The color of white, and I need to zoom out a little bit here. Move this over at least. Okay. So the color of light released um, when an, an atom is excited, and we're going to talk about that um, on um, tomorrow, I guess. Yeah, tomorrow. Um, corresponds to a frequency, and it corresponds to a wavelength. So if you look down here, I have to move this chair from my way. Um, if you look down here, this is the entire energy spectrum. Okay? Only some of it is in the form of visible light. Okay? Um, I think I did say in honors, as you go this way, you get less and less energy. So as you go this way, you get less energy and longer wavelengths. Wavelength. Less energy and longer wavelength. And that's off the screen a little bit, so let's see if I can move it a little bit. No, but anyway, I'll write it over here. So as you go this way, you get less energy and longer wavelength. So if you look at the visible light, which is only part of the spectrum, gamma rays, which are not visible, have one of the highest energies. Um, and, and a very, very, very um, 
you know, um, X-rays followed by X-rays, ultraviolet, and then we have the visible spectrum. And then we have less energy over here, obviously much longer, longer wavelength, 100 meters versus 0 0.001 nanometers, which is really, really, really small. Um, so I know Ms. Boyko likes to do, I think she likes to work in nanometers and I like to work in meters and the AP exam kind of likes her to work in, in meters, but this is the visible spectrum. You'll see that red has the longest wavelength, um, which is uh, about between 700 and so you'll see different cutoffs on different textbooks, with the cutoffs off of the colors. And violet has the shortest wavelength, so violet has more energy than red. Um, in that case, because shorter wavelength um, means less energy. And you can also see the reverse relationship. This has the most energy, but it has the greatest uh, frequency um, in that case. Okay. So there are important formulas that you need to not memorize because they're on the formula sheet. So these are on the formula sheet. If you look at your formula sheet, I think they're on the back. I have the formula sheet here. Um, if you look at the formula sheet, actually they're on the front of the formula sheet. So these, if you look here, they're right here, the atomic structure. Um, we have the formulas and we have the constants. So we're going to look at these formulas. So this is one formula. E is energy. H is something called Planck's constant, which is given to you on the on the formula sheet. And V is the frequency. You can get if you get your formula sheet out, you can get Planck's constant, but I've memorized it as 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34. If you have trouble with exponents on your calculator, with these calculators that, that are here, to write that number, this is a six, to write that number, this is how you would enter it into your calculator. I don't know if you can see, hopefully you can. All right, this is how you would write it into your calculator. You would type in 6.626, which I just messed up in typing. And then you hit the second button, right here, the second button. And then you click the E, which is right here. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can. And then you just write the exponent. The E is the X to the 10. And then you type in the exponent, negative 34. And that will write it like that, which it will come out like that, as you guys can see. Maybe if I turn on the light in the front, you'll be able to see better. I actually think that it's a little bit better. But the screen will be worse. So you can see that's how you type in that number. To get the E, you go second, and this button here, right here, to get the get the E. Okay. Actually, I think the light makes it go rainbowy, so I'm gonna turn that off. All right, and then we also have another formula that has to deal with light. We have C, which is the speed of light. Okay, equals the frequency times this lambda, which is the wavelength. And that formula, I believe, is on this formula sheet. Yep. Um, you can see right here on the formula sheet, right over here, backwards. So right here, it's backwards for me when I when I look at it. Um, and the speed of light which is annoying, but they want you to use the speed of light, the more accurate sig fig. So 2.998 times 10 to the negative, of like 10 to the eighth meters per second. Um, and they can get, so if you have the frequency uh, and you know the speed of light, you can get the wave. So now, and then obviously I give you the constants here. I didn't know I did that. Okay, now you're going to have to convert from meters to not to nanometers a lot in these problems um, because a lot of the speed of light is given in meters. 
So to convert to, so like a lot of times they may give you 